The three NADA films have actively developed from uh, the previous larger body of work titled Spielraum. So it's a work that has been in development for a number of years. It came into being in collaboration with a number of institutions and Balti has been really seminal in supporting um, NADA too, which was kind of the center heart of the installation and of the thinking. The NADA films at their heart have an investigation of three specific uh, modernist star architects uh, in the 20th century and their kind of roles within the construction of soft power. Soft power is of course nothing new in terms of architectural and authoritarian visions of the rulers, but it's quite interesting to look at it in modernism because for the first time it really kind of caught uh, the attention of the politicians. So they really started to pay attention to how these countries were presented on the international stage. The first NATO film starts with an investigation of Jensis Labrichter, who was a Croatian architect that was operating in former Yugoslavia um, post-Second World War. And it specifically identifies his work for the Yugoslav representation at the 1958 uh, Brussels Expo. It was an architecture that was very context-specific, but at the same time it bore his central artistic thought, which was the central pillar from which the entire pavilion structure was to be suspended. Now, because there was time for politicians to, to start uh, playing uh, with, the, with the design, the central pillar got censored. And this kind of became uh, a central thought from which then Nada pulled forward to look at other instances of artistic censorship and architectural censorship. <laughs> The title for the three films, Nada, comes from um, the Croatian word hope, and it was also the name of Richter's wife. So as the entire project is populated by female figures, sometimes speaking, sometimes mute, playing these allegorical positions of, of reinterpretations of mother nation, uh, this idea of hope kind of became the central pillar um, on which the project was built. And specifically, I was interested in this um, reference point that Richter, when, when his central pillar was censored, literally castrated by the politicians, he came up with these three sculptures that he titled Nada. And they were of different heights. And it was quite an interesting uh, way of thinking how valued does hope need to be in order for it to survive. And how an artist translates the censorship into, into something so beautiful and also, you know, very political. And in a way, how Nada One was looking at the architectural exhibitor or a plinth of this uh, Yugoslav presentation, Nada Two is looking at what was inside and which are the artists or art forms that are how we want to represent ourselves and then show the world, you know, our achievements. And so Nada Two picks up on that and uh, it identifies the Bela Bartok Ballet, Miraculous Mandarin, as the kind of um, artwork that the Yugoslav politicians went on to, again, design by committee as the re most representational and interesting form. So Nada too was filmed in the Arne Jakobsen and Erik Müller's uh, Aarhus Town Hall, which is an epitome of Danish design. I give the building uh, almost a role of, of a character within the film. So the building itself acts like a cinematographic device, if you want and it also delegates the movement, as it delegates the movement in, in real life of you know, the bureaucrats interacting with the, with the citizen. Now, the Bela Bartok Ballet um, that I referenced specifically was a production from 1957 that was then put onto stage in 58. And that was a Dusan and Ristic uh, scenography and costumography that, of course, got lost. You know, there's very few archival traces of it. There's about 12 photographs I managed to find within the archives of Belgrade. But the idea was to, to use that and use the archival holes uh, with a purpose and to show the free songs that exist precisely in these archival holes. I invited Lee Anderson to collaborate on the project because she works in a similar way, tracing the histories of dance, the histories of movements, historical dances that are also very lacking. And where there were lacks 
in the archival documentation, we used um, references of uh, nationalist painting, mostly from 19th and 20th century, where the female body is represented as, as a stand-in for, for nation-state. So these are standard poses, very allegorical, of course, of the flag bearer, the sword bearer, the, the, the sower. Um, so the central figure, um, who is in the original Bartok production, a prostitute, here becomes the mother nation. So each of the Nadas inhabits one of the fields of power. Nada one, we had the architectural form. With Nada two, we had the bodily movement and dance. And with Nada three, I went back to rhetoric. People of Europe, create for yourselves sacred possessions. Build. And in other three, we have three pr protagonists that inhabit, in a way, stereotypical roles of the artist, curator, and the nation. So the nation is Germania, and they have this um, conversation surrounding um, an exposition that they are supposedly putting together that has to represent the nation. Pillars of a positive future for our state. For another three, I was, I was invited by the Kunstmuseum Krefeld to propose uh, a site-specific, context-specific exhibition. And uh, the Kunstmuseum Krefeld has these two villas, and these are the Mies van der Rohe's uh, House Esters and House Lange. I really wanted to use the villas um, as pavilions, because they effectively were pavilions. Now, we are speaking of 1920s, Krefeld, Germany, and silk barons who held the power of the consortiums of the silk um, industry that then went on to be selected as the German national product that went on to the uh, Barcelona Universal Exposition in 1929. So in a way we're kind of tracing a similar path but we're kind of going back in time and we are finding the same structures. Through this exhibition we will achieve our destiny to be a shining city on a hill for all mankind to see. So another three uh, follows my way of working with utilizing transcripts, archival documents, uh, personal letters as well, uh, speeches or tracing of the speeches that are lost and using the actual historical words, but you know, within this new scripted format. So I want to take out time and, and name specifics away to kind of liberate the discourse and make it more universal. The entire project is, is filled with quite loaded um, references and symbols and allegories. And the three nadas, their moving image works, but they're, they're parts of theatre really. They're sort of only one part of the broader uh, narrative that the project proposes. There's a certain amount of elements like the performance and sculptural objects that are deposited within this environment almost as kind of leftover debris of the narrative that is left to the spectator to piece together. And it was quite central for the Baltic exhibition to try and uh, devise three very distinct spaces where the three nadas could, uh, could coexist but at the same time present different chapters. The way of how we decided to connect them was with these architectural props drawn from actual historic architecture and design, specifically the former Palace of Federation in Belgrade. So we have uh, an illuminated corridor that picks up on a kind of ceiling design above the grand staircase in that building that was finished just on time for the first conference of the non-aligned. So that was originally a ceiling overhanging the diplomats that were coming to, you know, to designate the new post-Second World War um, world in Europe. And the second element is the curtain that is framing Nada too. And that is uh, a reference to a tapestry, again hanging in this former palace of the Federation. And its title was The Bosnian Forest. In the flyer of the exhibition space, we have the work titled um, Show the Land in which a white space for national progress is ensured, which is a performative piece, but the performance only takes place at the opening night. And uh, a group of performers is gilding these political phrases almost as a kind of final act of staging the exhibition. And they're surrounded with a number of um, iron hoops 
that again bear the aphoristic phrases, but they're circular, so you know they continue to roll, they continue to to repeat themselves ad infinitum, you know, again referencing the nature of this these types of constructions.